2023, during the week of May 29th and June 4th, the Jehovah's Witnesses studied their famous workbook called Life and Ministry Meeting Workbook, more preferably known as Our Christian Life and Ministry, of which is studied every Tuesday or Wednesday night depending on where you live, and was formerly known as Our Kingdom Ministry. And this meeting in itself would be called the Theocratic Ministry School. The Theocratic Ministry School was a program established to train members in public speaking, teaching, and Bible education. It provided structured instructions and practice sessions to help individuals improve their communication skills and become more effective in sharing their beliefs with others. The Theocratic Ministry School was established in 1943 with an ironic title, The Watchtower, Announcing Jehovah's Kingdom as part of their organizational structure to enhance preaching and teaching efforts. And in 2016, that's when they changed the name and the program underwent the transformation, evolving into a more technically advanced format, incorporating thought-provoking videos alongside their traditional methods. If I may ask, where do you think we can find reliable help for dealing with the grief? I don't speak English. Spanish? The Jehovah's Witnesses are notorious for their constant changes with the leaders of the religion ironically claiming to be mediators for a god that doesn't change. Now I know change is sometimes a good thing, but not the point I'm making. When was the last time you said to yourself, I belong to Jehovah? Anyone anointed after 1992 would be of the anointed, but he would not be part of this generation. And Jesus said, this generation will not pass away until all these things happen. We are very pleased to announce that the governing body has decided to adjust the hour requirements for pioneers effective March 1st, 2023. We are pleased to announce that beginning November the 1st, 2023, congregation publishers will no longer be asked to report the amount of time they spend in the ministry. Once the Great Tribulation starts, is there a door of opportunity still available? Unbelieving relatives, disfellowshipped ones, could some of them, once they see the destruction of Babylon the Great, could they take a stand for the truth? Now we can't be dogmatic. The governing body does not have an issue with brothers wearing beards. When a person has been removed from the congregation, we stop keeping company with that person, not even eating with such a man. That does not mean that a Christian could not invite a disfellowship person to attend a congregation meeting. While we wouldn't have an extended conversation or socialize with such a person, we do not need to ignore him completely. The governing body has decided that sisters may choose to wear slacks, brothers may choose not to wear a tie or a jacket when participating in the ministry. Apart from being an organization that misleads their members with constant change, they credit their change to Jehovah, even though they recently admitted that they aren't inspired by him. And also, the governing body is neither inspired nor infallible. And if you're not careful, you won't realize how they contradict themselves. Well, knowing this, then we are not embarrassed about adjustments that are made, uh, nor do is an apology needed for not getting it exactly right previously. So this is what we know from the scriptures and from our own experience as well, uh, about how the light gets brighter in modern times. It comes about by means of the Holy Spirit, through his channel of the faithful and discreet slave, he reveals it gradually and at a time that it is needed. We understand this is how Jehovah operates. He reveals matters gradually when it is needed. You're either inspired or you're not. And because of this contradiction, they have yet to release this announcement on their website. So one has to ask, if they aren't inspired, what changes next to come then? And if it does come, should I even bother listening to these imperfect men? Are you a homosexual? While putting Jehovah on a pedestal and claiming they aren't infallible, they still ache in obeying the organization to obeying Jehovah God. And you can't have one without the other. Combining God and his earthly organization is something that despite their changes, they still manage to fool their members into thinking every change comes from him even when they say the governing body has decided. The governing body has decided. The governing body has decided. 
The governing body has decided. The governing body has decided. The decisions you make or even they make always means you're making decisions that are for or against Jehovah. So with all of that in mind, in this workbook having three sections, treasure from God's word, apply yourself to the field ministry and living as Christians, it is in this section that you will find the video of which could not be any more clearer. Jehovah is the father of the fatherless. In this video, viewers are presented with narratives of individuals who recount challenging childhoods where their parents left the organization, but the individuals claim that their parents left Jehovah instead. We were playing downstairs one day, and Mum came down to tell us she was leaving Jehovah and leaving Dad. This conflation is not only deceptive, but also manipulative, as it seeks to instill fear and guilt in viewers who may question the teachings or practices of the organization. Furthermore, the assertion that leaving the organization is synonymous with leaving Jehovah is blasphemy. Jehovah, as understood in the context of Jehovah's Witnesses, is believed to be the one true God, worthy of worship and obedience. However, the organization itself is a human institution, prone to error and imperfection. To suggest that leaving the organization is equivalent to abandoning Jehovah undermines the sovereignty and omnipotence of God, reducing him to a mere figure of an earthly organization. While this narrative aims to elicit sympathy and portray the organization as the true path to righteousness, it is essential to recognize the manipulative nature of such storytelling and to challenge the dangerous conflations of Jehovah with the organization itself. My parents' breakup was very tough. It was a struggle for my mother to raise two boys on her own. She would work two or three jobs, and serving Jehovah just took a back seat. However, this manipulation obscures the deeper issue at play, such as the harmful effects of indoctrination and the suppression of critical thinking within the organization. And so when I was waking up, I am sure that these people who had parents with dissenting views on the organization likely left for the same reasons I did. I myself attended this meeting just as I was waking up from the religion. Waking up is a technical term, meaning coming to a realization or awareness about certain aspects of the religion or its teachings, like Neo from The Matrix waking up to the reality that what he was once a part of was never truly the ultimate truth. My own awakening led me to question the beliefs and practices I had unquestionably followed for years. Certain doctrines weren't backed up by scripture. You weren't allowed to study the Bible by itself, you weren't allowed to research your own religion, and you definitely weren't allowed to speak to anyone who also woke up from the religion. And these were known as, and still are known as, apostates. Many of these things led me to use my critical thinking and ask myself if this was really the truth. Many of the signs led me to believe that this was in fact a cult, from how you were told to look and dress down to the way baptism is held which involved chanting and publicly answering specific unbiblical questions, and the way you had to walk single file with other candidates to the changing room to change into your water clothes while everyone around you clapped, and the clapping wouldn't stop until each and every person was out of sight. Truly a scary thing. I mean, they don't even cite the famous line in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit upon getting baptized. Here are the questions asked, and speaking of change, these were also altered slightly to indoctrinate you into branding you as a Jehovah's Witness rather than a follower of Christ. Not warning you of the consequences for leaving the cult, they don't even post these questions somewhere for members to look at before making this commitment. Although they omit the famous line from Matthew 28 19, Jehovah's Witnesses still assert the presence of the Holy Spirit upon emerging from the baptismal waters. I too once believed and experienced this sensation. However, upon reflection, I realized that what seemed like the Holy Spirit was simply the abrupt shock of cold air meeting my body after emerging from the hot water. A manipulation orchestrated by the pool's temperature and dare I say, orchestrated by the governing body. So when discussing how I was fully awake and attending their meeting, it felt this way. It felt cultish. I could see behind the veil with the way everyone answered questions. I couldn't resist and would raise my hand to make irrelevant comments just to see the reaction of the audience. And I actually recall my very last comment ever. 
I raised my hand to answer a question found in their book study portion of their meeting on paragraph 3, where it says, Why should you not let fear hold you back? They say at the end of the paragraph that Jehovah assures us that nothing will be able to separate us from his love, citing Romans chapter 8 verses 38 and 39, which upon reading further mentions nothing nor things now nor things to come will be able to separate us from his love. This is exactly what they want to say because this entire theme is about remaining close to Jehovah despite those around you who choose to leave Jehovah and practice apostasy especially if they are a close relative like your parents or even your children. I remember citing the scripture Joshua 1 9 of which says, Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Implying that you do not need to fear someone who has opposing thoughts, nor do you even need to let anyone tell you what to believe and where you need to go in order to learn from God. When you need to defend God, it reassures you that God will always stick by your side. And at the time, this sounded a lot better than Romans 8. And with a bonus, when it says do not be afraid, this could easily apply to listening to an apostate, but they don't want you to listen to or even reason with one. They want you to be afraid, and this scripture says otherwise. So if they had used this scripture instead, there would be no point to the article and no point to the video and I wanted everyone in the congregation to know this. I found myself doing this a lot before actually, even when I was fully indoctrinated. My zeal for accurate knowledge of the Bible was my ultimate goal, and this meeting showcased this. I only attended this meeting with intentions of it being my last meeting where I can prove that I wasn't crazy, and sure enough, the timing couldn't have been more opportune. If you haven't noticed already, the video seeks to evoke sympathy and portray the organization as a source of stability and security. I mean, just look at how they use their music. When my parents divorced, my mom was very depressed. She did the best she could, but Jehovah didn't intend for mothers to fill both roles as parents. My sisters and I, we made a conscious choice that we weren't going to make the same bad choices that mom did. We realized that it's up to us. So I dedicated my life to Jehovah and was baptized when I was 15. It's disheartening to witness these individuals backstabbing and turning against their own parents, characterizing their choices as bad and accusing them of having left Jehovah. A child or young adult who watches this video will most likely hold resentment towards their parents who choose not to associate with other witnesses or even you and share in their own love. I could not imagine a parent reaching out to their child and their child never reaching back. I couldn't even imagine a parent dying of old age and their children never acknowledging their existence. It is highly probable for this to happen. They are teaching kids to be this way. They also teach parents to be this way. Like in this video where a child who was disfellowshipped and ostracized couldn't even make a phone call to hear from her parents for 15 years before returning to the organization for fear of losing not only on her parents' love, but also dying in Armageddon, which is the driving force for every witness to stay within the control of Watchtower, seeing not only Jehovah as the father figure who protects their children from harm, but seeing the organization as that same father figure that would protect them from impending doom. After watching the video, the article continues asking the viewers to review questions of which doesn't get any better with the second question being, what reassurance for those being raised by single parents is found at Psalms 27.10? This question is incredibly disturbing and sort of completes your appetite once you read the scripture, of which says, even if my own father and mother abandon me, Jehovah himself will take me in. Again, this implies that not only did your parents leave Jehovah or the organization, but they left you as well. The amount of stress the parents will now undergo because their children are being brainwashed into thinking they're just horrible people. I could not live a single day knowing my sons hate me after all that I did for them simply because I don't believe that the organization is called the truth. See, regardless of what anyone's beliefs are, even if they still believe in Jehovah and Jesus, you are not allowed to disagree with any teaching, for you will be labeled an apostate. It is deeply unsettling and heartbreaking, leaving a bitter taste in one's mouth, especially when considering that the scripture suggests abandonment by one's parents. 
The toll it takes on parents knowing their children are being indoctrinated to view them as villains is unimaginable. This leads to ostracism from the community. The leaders instilling fear and isolation among members because they don't want you to know that they fear apostates, so you must fear them as well. It's all to keep you from the actual truths and maintain control. And it's disheartening to witness the manipulation and pain this organization truly causes. So it's up to us. With Jehovah, we can be anything we want to be. Please like and share this video as it will help reach more people in need of saving. This organization must be stopped. With all that being said, this is MJ in Context, urging you to take care, stay safe, and remember, you can't make this up. Yeah.